In this video, we want to look at how to organize and display information a little bit differently than the way we've done before. So, so far we've looked at text as just being like paragraphs of text and maybe headers and titles and things like that. But there's so much more that you can actually do in Microsoft Word that can help describe things and explain things a little bit easier. So let's take a look at some of those different ways. Now, I have here a collection of text and we saw this earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste this text all in. Now, remember, this is just lorem ipsum text. It's kind of just gibberish to us. But the idea is that we focus on what we're doing, not the words that are being said. Now, this is a pretty common way of displaying our information. Like I said, we have titles, we have headlines, things like that. But sometimes we want to display this in multiple columns. Let me give you a quick example of how to do that. I'm going to come to the Layout tab up on the ribbon bar, and I'm going to choose Columns, and you'll notice that right now I have one column. However, I can have two, three, or some other types of formats. So I'm just going to pick real easily two columns for right now. And you'll notice that it automatically formats my columns. And as I come down here to the bottom of this column, if I were to add some more text, I'm just going to copy and paste this just so you can kind of see, you'll notice that it's going to go and automatically wrap up to my new column. This makes it really, really easy. So if I'm doing something like a newsletter where I'm using multiple columns to make it easy to read and maybe my columns need to be kind of separated out, this works really well for me. I can even insert breaks that's a column break. So it forces me to go to a new column if I want. Let me show you how to do that real quickly. I'm going to come over here my text, select break, and I'm going to choose a column break right here. And notice that that automatically moves my text. Anything that was left in that column now moves to my new column. So that way I don't have a story kind of starting at the bottom of one and then the user has to go all the way up to the top. So this is a really easy way to kind of break up a lot of text and make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit easier to read. And we see this all the time in places like newsletters, newspapers, for those of you who remember them, and even magazine articles a lot of times will do things like this. Now the ruler up on the top, you'll notice looks a little bit different than what we're used to. And that's because this is set up for now two separate rulers, one for each column. And I can easily move these and adjust these if I need to. So I'm going to take my left column here and adjust its right margin. And notice how it separates and makes smaller and wider the inner space between my columns. So I can easily do that. If I want to adjust my column sizes, it's easiest to come over here back to my columns and adjust to set to specify a left or the right column, whichever is preferable. Notice if I go to a second page, it's going to create information in a new column on the second page. So just a few things to look at as far as that goes. Let's look at some other ways to display information inside of Microsoft Word. I use Control N to create a new document. And so I'm going to show you two different things that you can do. One is I have some text here. So I have a document here. I'm going to simulate creating a list with them. I'm just going to use Control A to select everything and then Control C to copy. And I paste these in. And by default, they come in as their own individual lines. Once again, this is also lorem ipsum text, just in smaller notation. But I want to turn this into a list. Now there's two very common types of lists. The first is a bullet list. With my mouse cursor on the very top line, I come up here to my bullet points and under paragraph, and notice it creates one bullet point for me. Not what I want, I want the whole selection. So Control Z to undo that. I'm going to select my whole set of items I want to be a series of bullet points. And now if I click my bullet point icon, it automatically creates all those into a bullet list. This is very nice and easy to do. I can also do some basic formatting with this. So for example, 
Right now I'm using a little circle, but I could use a square. And notice it converts all of them to squares. I could use check marks or diamonds or some other shapes. I can even have different items based upon what level they are. So if I go back to my bullet list, for example, and maybe this needs to be a subtask within it. I use my tab key and that specifies it as a sub list. If I go to the beginning of my line for my next item, I can hit tab again and that's also a sub list. So this way, different bullet points and depending upon how they're nested will appear differently. Very handy to use if I have multiple lists. Now, bullet lists are sometimes referred to as an unordered list. And if you talk to a web designer, you'll hear them refer to it as an unordered list all the time. That is, this is a list of items. It doesn't matter what order you view them in. So, for example, if I have a to-do list and I just need to get these done, I don't have to get them done in any specific order. A bullet list works great for that. A little shopping list. A bullet list is perfect. It doesn't really matter what items I buy first. Now, typically, I'm going to buy my frozen foods last because I don't want my ice cream melting. But for the most part, considering how long someone's typically in a grocery store or any other type of place like that, the bullet list will work just fine. It doesn't matter to us. Now, I have a second group of items that I want to create an order list. This is sometimes referred to as a numbered list. Once again, on my home tab, I'm going to come to a paragraph section and choose numbering to create my numbered list. Now, when you create a numbered list, you usually want to do those items in order. So I need to do my first step, then my second step, my third step. Think about it like if I was following a set of instructions on how to build a piece of machinery for my house. Maybe a new coffee table or a new entertainment center. I need to perform certain steps in certain orders. Otherwise, they won't get done. Just as with my bullet list, though, I can change numbering to be differently. So I might use a number in a period, which is default, a number in parentheses, Roman numerals. I can even do letters for my list. So this is really a good way to think of it as an ordered list, doing a number of things that we need to do in order. If I choose a number alignment to be alphabetical with capital letters, you can see it looks something like this. Now, there is one other list that we can use, and I'm going to select my top list because it works really well for this. And if you have to build an outline for an English class or something like that, this is where you're going to find it really helpful. And that is, I have a multi-level list. This is designed to be multiple levels. If I click on the little arrow beside it, you'll notice that I have one that's specifically designed for doing outlines. And you can see exactly how it's going to look. Every time I were to create an indent, it would move me to a new level. It automatically uses the Roman numerals, then capital letters, then there's going to be numbers, lowercase letters, etc., etc., just as you would expect with something like this. So there's a lot of different ways to create some list. And lists are really good because they help you organize your information. They keep things very succinct. It makes it easy for the end reader to look at items one at a time. If we want to look at a lot of information, then we might want to use a table. So let's look at an example of that. Once again, I'm just going to create a blank new document real quick. And here I have some information from an Excel file. So I'm going to select and copy this information from Excel. And then I'm going to paste it directly into Microsoft Word. And Microsoft Word, you'll notice, automatically keeps track of all of my information about the table. In fact, if I click inside of it, you can see the rows and cells. Now, now a table in Microsoft Word is not really easy to read. You don't know necessarily where a new line is, or where a new row starts, where new columns are, etc. Luckily, it's really easy to fix. If I look at my ribbon bar in the top right hand side, you notice I have table tools, I have design, and I have layout. So let's first look at the design. The design lets me say, how am I going to look? Notice it's already identified the fact that it's probably got a header row, and it's got a first column. Well, we're going to take that out. It's, the first column is not used for labeling our rows. 
I'm going to come right here. If I hover over my table styles, you can see how it's going to start to organize my information a little differently. And I have this list, but if I click on my little arrow, you notice I get a lot more options. So I'm just going to pick one of these, make it a little bit easier to read. This alternating background color is sometimes referred to as zebra striping. The idea being that it helps me know what row I'm on, especially when I have something like the SID, or you can think of it as a student ID, uh, being on two separate rows because the number is so large. Now, if I want to adjust the size of my columns, I'm going to come up to my ruler, and I'm going to grab this little hash mark here. I'm just going to adjust a little bit to the right. Now everything fits on one row. So sometimes I can do that, and that's really helpful. Sometimes I can't. Now, whether or not you're able to make things adjust so they all fit on one row or not, that depends a lot on your data. You might have a large piece of data, for example, an address or a paragraph bio or something like that, in which case you would almost never be able to get to fit. But when you can, a lot of times people find it preferable. That way it's easier to read. So here's some information for us. It all fits in one simple section. I can come in and change my shading. So if I want to use different colors on a specific item, I can. I can change my border styles. And I'm going to come here to my layout. Now, as part of my layout, I have some options. I have properties for my table. This lets me know how big my table is going to be. Is it going to be aligned a certain way? Is text going to be allowed to wrap around it? All those types of things. I can insert either above or below where my cursor currently is. I can also insert new columns to the left or right of where I am. I can split cells, so if they need to be multiple cells, or likewise, I can join cells if necessary. Under alignment, I have a way to choose how am I going to display my data. Now, because each cell only takes up one row height, I don't have multiple rows. This is not really important to me. But if I had multi-line rows, now I need to know what happens when I have smaller rows. Do I want to start on the upper left-hand side or maybe centered? Do I need a center in the immediate center of my cell? That way, if a row is too wide and too tall, it's automatically centered. All these things are kind of design things that you have to kind of figure out what's best for what you're trying to do. So this gives you some flexibility in how I display this. And anytime I want to take data, for example, from Excel and import it into Microsoft Word, this is a great way to do it because it's really, really simple. This is a really simple way to copy in a table automatically using Excel. I can also copy in stuff a lot of times from a web page and other sources.